Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webcast entitled Business Intelligence for Revenue Management. Uh, some quick introductions before we get started. Uh, my name is Paul Taylor. I'm a principal consultant at Florogood based in the UK. I have uh, many years of experience in the business intelligence and analytics space, assisting numerous customers over the years uh, across multiple industries, largely consumer packaged goods, financial services, and pharmaceuticals with their BI and analytics system implementations. I'm Shabu, and I'm a senior consultant at Thorogood, based in the UK. I have worked in the business intelligence and analytics space for, for many years now, across domains such as CPG, financial services, hospitality, helping them with their end-to-end -end BI solutions. I'm Sudarshan. I'm a BI and analytics consultant. I've been working with Thorogood Associates for about four years now. I'm based out of the London office. I have primarily worked on tools in the end-to-end -end Microsoft stack with focus on Azure platform within the context of the CPG company. Thank you, Shibu and Sadarshan. Uh, please feel free to contact any of us after this event if you have any questions using these contact details that you see on the screen. Now, this event is a follow-up to a similar event that took place in November of last year. Uh, but given the significant worldwide events that have taken place in recent months, it seems like a recap of some of that information with a specific focus on the importance of revenue management in uncertain times is of particular relevance right now. So today's agenda is a brief introduction to Thorogood, a recap of some of the fundamentals of revenue management, including a look at the importance of revenue management in uncertain times, an understanding of the maturity spectrum and where your position on it might be and how you can undertake a phased approach to an implementation strategy. Thorogood is a global and independent customer-focus-based intelligence, uh, business intelligence analytics consulting firm. We operate globally, headquartered in the UK, and have offices in the US, India, Singapore, and Brazil. We focus on a combination of analytical abilities, technology, and business focus to deliver unique solutions to our customers. Our services range from helping customers with their BI and analytics strategies and roadmaps through to the delivery and maintenance of BI and analytics applications. Uh, we're an independent company. We partner with who we believe are the key players in the BI analytics market. And we work with numerous companies specializing across the CPG, pharmaceutical, finance, and insurance sectors, as they tend to be data rich and see lots of value in creating business intelligence and analytics tools. So let's talk about revenue management. And first of all, what is revenue management? The objective of revenue management is to sell the right product to the right customer at the right time for the right price as per the emphasis that we've added here to this quote by Robert Cross, who's held as the guru of revenue management by the Wall Street Journal. Another way of putting this is that the objective is to maximize the revenues and profits from a company's brand and product portfolio over time. Now, before we go into a little more detail on some of the fundamentals of an NRM system, there are some particularly pertinent considerations that take on more relevance during times of uncertainty, like the one we're facing at the moment. No matter what industry you're involved with, demand patterns have changed considerably. So there are some fundamental considerations that may take on different relevance to normal times. The objective of revenue management focuses on the selling of the right product to the right customer. But what is the right product right now? Could you have forecast the amount of demand volatility in the market? Are large pack sizes selling in a way that wouldn't make sense in a different circumstance? Are certain products just not selling at the moment? when normally you would expect demand to start increasing, and some channels simply not available. Are your promotional activities appropriate for the current circumstances? Should budgets be reallocated to other products or other time periods when promotions are more likely to impact customer choice? And are your competitors achieving significant success in areas where you are currently not operating, such as a particular product, channel, price point combination? Is the scope for you to quickly realign and target these potentially profitable areas. A good revenue management system will provide insight to help address these considerations. An effective revenue management system will make use of the enablers of revenue management to facilitate an understanding of the levers of revenue management. These, in turn, will enable revenue managers to harness the latest consumer and market information so they can analyze the market, adjust the product mix, and target consumers through the right customer channels at the right time and at the right price. This will require integrated internal external data, flexibility of structures to accommodate change, such as new products, markets, competitive information and data sets, 
and intuitive delivery of insights that facilitate collaboration across multiple business units within the organization. Now, I'll hand over to my colleague Shibu, who will take us through some more details relating to the fundamentals of revenue management. The levers consist of specific areas that can be flexed in order to play around with the product offerings that a company may have. So focus on price, whether this is across your brands or within brands and across your packs, or focus on product and pack inventory or mix, how those packs are promoted, and finally how you sell and distribute those products, which channel you use and on what terms. The aim is to increase gross sales value and profit. We may want to increase volume by reducing price, but this wouldn't be ideal. Instead, we aim to identify what is the right price for a product, a target price, which will depend on multiple factors. There may well be questions that you want to understand the answers to across these different areas, and we will look at some examples of these scenarios in the demonstration later on. These scenarios are age-old, really, in the sense they have always existed, like at what price should you sell your products? If you sold a different size of product, would that positively increase your sales? Would selling an accompanying product have a positive or a negative impact? Does the timing have an impact? Do any external factors or seasonality have an impact? And so does the price need to vary accordingly? What is the impact of competition on your selling strategy? And what is the most effective method of distribution at your disposal? How do you make those methods even more advantageous to you? In simple terms, how many pack sizes do you wish to sell? Are there any complementary products that you believe would appeal to your cons con consumers? Is there a right time to sell some of the products? What is the right price? Does it need to be discounted because demand isn't so high or because a competitor has a cheaper equivalent product? Ultimately, to achieve the aim of revenue management and to be able to understand insights from revenue management, we follow a framework consisting of what are called as levers and enablers. The five levers of revenue management, namely brand portfolio pricing, pack price architecture, active mix management, promotions management, and trade terms management provide insights into being able to answer the scenarios at which the product needs to be sold and for what price, mix, and terms. Brand portfolio pricing allows you to capture the full value of your brands to consumers. This means you can better avoid scenarios where they are over or underpriced. Pack price architecture helps identify if your products are provided at the right format, pack, and price for specific shop emissions and purchase occasions. Active mix management enables your sales and key account teams to drive the SKU and channel mix to the best sources for profits and growth. Promotions management helps you gauge the effectiveness of your promotions and adjust them accordingly as opposed to implementing conventional promotional cycles. And finally, trade terms management allows firms to put effective pay for performance mechanisms in place to reward revenue generation behavior from their retailers. While the levers give the insights, sustaining revenue management as a practice involves the development of the enablers of revenue management. The five enablers are the people in the organization, that is, to have dedicated resources, with a team for local market focus and a global COE to direct the NRM strategy and implementation iteratively. The process is revenue management as a function needs to be part of the firm's strategic planning activity and the insights from the practice are to be diligently made available to the right people so that critical decisions can be taken at the right times. The tools a high-tech solution in place that can cater to the needs of firm's revenue management initiative by leveraging data both internal and external. We will see more about this later in the slides. KPIs and dashboards, the definition of globally consistent measures and metrics that better indicate the performance of revenue management. And finally, capabilities, that is to take up the practice of training, developing, and skilling up revenue management as a practice with the people involved. We'll take a look at some of the considerations prior to implementing a revenue management system for your firm now. From a data considerations perspective, granularity of the data. For instance, the product portfolio. Does your firm have the right internal data recorded at a category level, or is it available at the school levels or lower? Similarly, for other dimensionalities like geographies, retailers, et cetera. How often is the data received or reported in the internal systems? Is it daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly? The frequency will in many ways directly correlate with the ability to report the data as frequently as well. What periods of time reporting needs are expected and can the existing data fulfill that? 
periods typically involve a year to date, moving annual totals, rolling four weeks, rolling 12 weeks, et cetera. What is the accuracy of the data that is reported in the systems? Are there gaps? If yes, can those gaps in data be filled? Or do considerations around data completeness be taken into account? Are the measures defined consistently and accurately across the business globally? Will there be historical data restatements? If yes, how is the system expected to handle those restatements to allow for better reporting? Along with the internal data, external data can be supplemented to further leverage better insights from your revenue management system. To that extent, can the external data be mapped or aligned correctly with the internally maintained data? Like, can the product uh, hierarchy be aligned? Is it possible to allocate data to the common levels of granularity? Is there a lag between the sell-in, the sell-through, and the sell-out data capture? If yes, how would this be tackled for better reporting? And can the system accommodate a constantly changing landscape of the business? Generally, different business users may want to see the data differently, like the levels of granularity, for instance. Marketing may want an aggregated view, while category managers may want to see individual products. These business requirements need to be kept in mind when building a flexible back-end data model and front-end dashboard. Operationally, how to arrive at a quick implementation? Typically, a phased approach in which starting off with the most appropriate lever based on business priority, data, and or business user, user availability works well to derive faster insights. However you begin, the need to scale up in the future needs to be kept in mind, and consequently, a strong base system needs to be built. So, what can a revenue management system look like? I will hand it over to my colleague, Sudarshan, so that he can take us through how a revenue management system ideally functions. For this portion of the presentation, I'll be playing the role of an analyst at a CPG company, specifically examining detergents. We'll be using these visuals to show how you can answer some of the questions we discussed earlier across the levers. All this data was created for the purpose of the demonstration only and has been simplified to tell better stories. The summary dashboard gives a high-level picture of the net revenue realization across the various levers with specific emphasis on brands and products. It leverages internal P&L data to provide a holistic understanding of the revenue management performance for the period in context. The revenue growth mm -hmm. summary provides an insight to how the year-on-year, year-to-date changes in the revenue realization is coming from the five levers. As can be seen, our efforts from the mix management are proving beneficial, while the other levers might need to review to see how they can be turned around to maximize our revenue realization for the same volume of our product portfolio. Further information regarding the brand and product specific contributions are available from the leaders and bleeders chart. It highlights which of our brands or product categories are growing or declining and allows us to understand if this is aligned with our brand or product strategy. While the summary dashboard provides us insights on how the internal data is looking, the context dashboard is used for the purpose of providing an overall market context and then find out what is the bigger picture and how it will inform the rest of our approach. We are not only able to see the performance of our brands, that is in this scenario, brand three and brand five, which is highlighted in green, but we get a high level view on how the market is performing and also insights on our competitors' brands' performance by using the data from the external data vendors. For this demo, we are looking at the data at a year-to-date level, comparing current year and previous years year-to-date. But the data could be available across alternate time periods as well, such as monthly, weekly, or even daily. This depends on the granularity of the data that is available to us. We can examine how the market composition is and where do we stand in the market in terms of both value and sales volume as shown in the top two visualizations. We can examine how our competitors are tracking in the same way by examining their trends. This gives us an insight on how the performance of the brands have changed between the time periods, as seen in the performance metrics visualization. We can see that our primary brand, that is brand five, has fallen in terms of sales in market by 37%, while our main competitor, that is brand four, has eaten into our market share by 32%. We should be able to identify the reasons behind this drastic change 
when we have a look into the data in detail through the other dashboards. The context dashboard also helps us to examine regional or channel performance for your own company or for competitors. The point being is to provide an overview to begin to decide how you'll dive into the rest of your data. Our first granular lever that we're going to be looking at is brand price. This is where we can find out if our consumers are being offered the right price of our brand. Looking at this, we should be able to get an idea on what is our current retail price index across different retailers and what our target should be. As shown in the visual, we can uncover if we hit the most attractive retail price tiers. Here, we see our brands across channels with the size of the bubble representing volume. Certain price levels are succeeding more within certain channels. We see some inconsistencies within a brand across channels. We can also see potential cannibalization occurring in retailer 5, something that may be causing problems. This could possibly be because of a higher price level of our brand, that is brand 5, in comparison to our competitor brand 4. Using this visualization, we can finally tune our total portfolio to adjust the pricing strategy. Once our targeted strategy is defined, the roadmap can be planned to move, for, move from our current position to our target. Next up, we have the pack price. This helps us in examining the size of the product across brands and retailers. The purpose of this view is to identify potential gaps in our offerings based on the success of the current mix. Here, we ask ourselves if the pack lineup addresses the magic price points in each channel. In our visualization, we can see that brand 4 is seeing a lot of success at all retailers in the 100 ml pack. <coughs> this indicates that there's a shift in the buying patterns of customers. The consumers are moving towards bigger pack sizes due to prevailing market conditions. This could in fact be one of the primary reasons for a drop in brand price market value as our products are being sold only in the smaller pack sizes. However, we can also see we may be able to seize the opportunity within our other brand, that is brand 3, as the 35 ml pack, while being our most successful, is not utilized by any other brands in any other retailer. Looking into this helps us discover if our current lineup is aligned to our strategic initiatives across our brands and what our optimal lineup should look like. Our active mix dashboard can help us perform white place analysis as shown here. It helps us in understanding what are we offering and to whom. Using a growth metric, we can discover where our promising products are being sold and what pack size they are being sold in. These can help us measure our growth potential to maximize our reach in retailers we already work with, in sizes we already use, and identifying where we might seek to grow next. As we had mentioned earlier, the 100 ml pack size is one which is missing in our product line, as seen in the pack size lever. It is one of the key demands of the market currently, hence it is shown as a white space to us in all the three formats that we have here, capsule, liquid concentrated, and powder. Also, from the brand price lever, we can conclude that our headroom for profit is quite low across retailer one and two. Based on that observation, the active mix report gives us a suggestion to limit the sales of these brands across these retailers while increasing the output to retailer four and five where there's more room for profit. Next up, we have the promotion lever. This lever provides us insights on the effectiveness of our promotion strategy. It answers three questions such as whether we are competing on promotions on the right category or not, if our promotional strategy is aligned to our overall brand objective, how efficient are our promotions and insights on our depth of discount. From the first two visualizations, we can see that even though there has been an increase in the sale of promotional goods across the market, there has been a drop in the sales of our promotional goods from previous year to current year for both our brands, brand three and brand five. This could potentially indicate that our promotional strategy is not on point and requires a correction. Moving to the visualization on the right, it provides information on how efficient the promotions are for different brands. For this, we use a KPI called promotional efficiency, which provides us an indication on what volume of your goods will be sold anyway without any merchandising. We see that brand five, the promotional efficiency is around 36%. So what does this mean? It means that only 36% of your goods is sold due to the promotions, while 64% of it is sold anyway. 
Meanwhile, the promotional efficiency for brand 4 is around 75%. This tells us that brand 4 has identified the exact requirement of the market and are able to generate promotional activity to fulfill this demand. We had earlier seen that the brand 4 sales had increased in the current period because they are in the 100 ml market segment. What we could do to compete in the market is to sell multi-packs of our 50 ml variant to supply to the market's demand for higher pack sizes. This will, in fact, help us compete against brand 4. This could be one of the promotional strategies that could be taken to increase our promotional efficiency. The other option is where the company could also resort to cutting down further on any promotional activity to increase more cash flow and ride out this anomaly in the market until the demands as what they are before. Finally, we have the trade spend lever where we examine our trade terms with current partners. Here, we paint a picture of our current trade terms, seeing how they are structured about customers. As indicated, retailer four and five return a great turnover compared to the trade terms provided, whilst the other viewers need more effort to get them onto the stage of returns. Generally, a year-on-year -year comparison allows to understand the change in turnover relative to the change in the trade terms, and a strong positive correlation indicates an investment to be made in those retailers as opposed to the retailers where the correlation is negative. So Sudarshan has just demonstrated what a front-end tool might look like that allows you to explore your performance via the revenue management levers. What you might need to do next will be dependent on where you are on the revenue management maturity spectrum. You could conceivably have nothing right now, though your positioning on this spectrum is likely to be a function of the mechanism that you currently use for revenue management reporting and analysis and the data readiness of your organization. As we've discussed, the fundamentals of revenue management are not new, but the amount of data that is available and the tools and techniques that can be used to analyze that data and predict customer behavior at the micro level have changed dramatically. The value that you can extract from your revenue management system is likely to be extremely limited when you are, unless you are near or at the upper end of the scale. If we look back to Cross's quote from earlier on, but this time rather than looking at the objective of revenue management, we look at the focus on the potential impacts of technology. He says, in its high tech mode, revenue management is a disciplined process that enables companies to use massive amounts of customer data to dynamically forecast customer behavior at the micro market level. We also add in Teliori and Van Ryzen's comment that science and technology now make it possible to manage demand on a scale and complexity that will be unthinkable through manual means. These add further weight to the need for digital transformation approach to successfully implement revenue management in today's data-rich and uncertain world. Back to the maturity spectrum, in terms of data readiness, first of all, you need data. P&L data to understand profitability, internal sales data, and master data, reporting hierarchy, etc. From this data, you could start to build your own reports, maybe even connect directly from Excel. But the scope to do anything meaningful is limited. You then want to add in external data. Now, this data needs to be aligned, which can be a huge challenge when dealing with data quality issues, but also different standards across different data suppliers, local languages, etc. And without alignment, you won't be able to trust that data. Creating a robust revenue management semantic layer will create this alignment and with full aligned data sets, you can then calculate KPIs and enable joined up end user reporting analytics in a fully integrated system. Now we've already established that a good revenue management system uses the right data in the right model with the right calculations viewed in the right way for your business. It also needs to be flexible and adaptable. It's not a one-time implementation and needs to adhere to the principles of the five enablers that were mentioned earlier, especially in order to continue to provide business value regardless of, or maybe especially because of, the changes in circumstances. The ability to more accurately forecast changes in demand patterns will be much better served by using the latest capabilities in data science that can easily ingest additional data sources, such as social media indicators, to predict demand based on close to real-time contextual factors with more emphasis on recent history. Data granularity at such a level that can pick out regional variances is key when demand volatility varies significantly across markets. To manage your business's response to change and to prepare for a return to a normal of some form, whatever that might be, 
requires your people and organization to be committed to local revenue management and resources, needs to integrate insights derived from your revenue management system into strategic planning processes and operations, provide the tools that enable a high-tech approach to revenue management and enable the consumption and interaction with these insights at all levels of the organization through consistent metrics and dashboards and ensure revenue management processes and capabilities are continually revised and communicated. The challenge of understanding the dynamics of thousands of products across many shelves in many stores for multiple retailers globally without the use of data-driven technology to make sense of that data will be too great and put you at a disadvantage versus your competition. The insights and opportunities that can be identified at the margin through techniques such as machine learning or more simply just the ability to navigate the masses of aggregated data across multiple complex hierarchies with associated visualizations. Enhancing the ability to ingest more easily, more varied and more granular data into a company data lake strategy will mean that in terms of revenue, uh, data readiness, your revenue management application will be the upper end of the maturity spectrum and enable the capability to perform advanced analytics on your data. So how can you move along the maturity spectrum? A BI solution for revenue management needs to have a foundation of the right data. The more data, the better. It needs to be modeled correctly. It needs to be able to ingest data quickly and over time in a timely and recurring manner, flexible enough to adapt to the ever-changing product and market landscape. Operationally, when implementing a BI solution for revenue management, you may want to start small. Focus on a quick implementation that provides business value as quickly as possible and ensure what you're building is scalable across multiple dimensions. So how do you build out? Well, you can scale in multiple directions. You could add more markets, geographies. Your implementation could be a success in the US, for example, and you now want to expand to include the UK. You can add more products. Another part of the business might have availability coming up to talk about their data and their requirements and add other levers if data is available. The solution will get bigger, so it needs a cohesive platform. If you're starting small to achieve quick wins, you need to ensure that this is not at the expense for future gains. The approach should always focus on business value, not just on what is technically interesting, simple, or complex and challenging. Keeping the business involved throughout will help drive business adoption. So where to next? Well, at Thorogood, we have some products and services that could help accelerate the implementation of your revenue management business intelligence solution. We have an algorithmic model called Automated Insights for Manufacturers, or AIM, an iterative dashboard development methodology, a reporting analytics hub that provides a seamless end user experience, and also a managed service for creating that foundational layer of data on your market data called MIDA. Finally, if you have any questions about today's event, or how we could potentially help you with your business intelligence implementation for revenue management, please reach out to any of us using any of these contact details you can see on your screen. Thank you. Goodbye.